What is up guys and gals? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Now we're not really going to be spending a lot of time here in the garage with the bike. This is going to be more of a nerdy technical video as far as we're going to be on the laptop. I'm going to show you some tuning softwares and what I've been doing to actually tune the bike on my own on the road. Unlike a car, you can have a laptop set off to the side of you. You can be watching stuff and changing stuff as needed. Not in this case. I have to go ride the bike, data log, take the information back to the laptop and make these changes, go back out and see if the changes were good. So it's a big process. It's been very, there's been a lot of rides back and forth. Some of them just didn't work out as far as I forgot to even click data log. So I went out, did a 10 minute ride and no changes were made because I had no data. Anyways, so what we're gonna do is and disclaimer, anything I do here, I take no responsibility if you guys try to replicate it and something bad happens. What I've been doing is what I need to do for this particular bike, okay? And actually I've been tuning it very safe, okay? As far as ignition and AFR. Now, is it completely correct of what I've been doing? I don't know, but from all the research I've done and the tuning courses I've taken and the tuning classes that I've been watching, I'm on the right track, okay? Not an expert at all. I don't claim to be an expert, okay? But there is an expert that I will be having a tuning session with this particular bike and him, he's in Florida. He'll be doing a remote tune, all right? And get me up to par where I should be as far as ignition and other fine tuning of the AFRs. So let's go ahead and jump to the laptop. Well, actually, I'm gonna do this downstairs on my other computer because it has screen recording and it looks a lot better if it's crisp and clear. So let's go. Okay, jumping into our first tune here, or my first data log, going into the tuning file, this is what I have. Now, to you guys, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this system right here works off of VE. This is not a, a number or a number system based off of fuel, but this is volumetric efficiency. What these numbers indicate is basically how much of the cylinder is filled, right? at this RPM and throttle position. So 17.7% of the cylinder fill is available here. When 77% right here is available at 5,000 RPM at 30% throttle position. So what this does is the ECU calculates based off of your fuel. Okay, so you go to fuel general here and it tells me I'm using E10, which is pump gas with 10% ethanol. Now, when you scroll down here, I have my injector flow, all right? So at 43.5 PSI, my injectors are 851 cc. The higher that the PSI goes, the more fuel that the ECU injects. Well, not ECU, but the injector actually injects itself because higher PSI, a little better flow. That is not a linear interpolation, by the way. So when we go down here, this can also tell me at PSI versus voltage what the milliseconds is right here or dead time that the injector is going to be having but this is very nerdy stuff we're going to get back to that later in life so we're going here now what happens is as this i guess you could say as this travels okay um rpm versus um throttle position the injectors or the computer controls the injectors to open and close more or less depending on how much air that the computer thinks is in the cylinder. So let's just say here at 5% throttle, we're making 5% throttle, 4,500 RPM, 42.4% cylinder fill. So let's say the injector is open for 1.6, okay? 1.6 milliseconds. But over here at 7,000 RPM and 15% throttle, all right, this is saying 74.7 okay cylinder fill so the injector might need to be open a little bit longer so instead of the 1.6 maybe it's 1.9 so this is what this is doing here in the background now what i've been doing is is i would go ride the bike and i would hold these certain um, throttle positions for a length of time i'm going to show you what i would do to uh well tune. While I'm on the road, what I do is I hold the throttle position to a certain degree. So a certain percentage here, let's say 5%. 
So I would hold it here for a matter of maybe 15 seconds. Now it doesn't matter what the RPMs go to or the mile per hour as long as it's safe. I'm monitoring Lambda, which is AFR in a different term, but Lambda. And then I'm also monitoring my throttle position. After about 10 to 15 seconds from there, I'll climb up very slowly and then position myself at 10% throttle. And then 15. And then 20. And I'll hold it here for about 10 to 15 seconds every single time. while I'm monitoring Lambda, making sure this doesn't go too lean or too rich. If it does, I hold off, I stop, and I go back and I tune those areas that I know that are unsafe to hold that position there. Now, while we're holding it at these positions, we're also looking for things that we need to change as far as ignition in the tune and other things relating to fuel. We keep on coming back to the garage, making those changes, and then finding, I guess you could say, optimal timing as well. So I'd go back, make these changes, okay? Re-upload a new tune with those fixes, go back out and do it over again. So we'd go 5%, oops, we do 5%, 10%, remember, hold for 10 to 15 seconds, 15%, 10 to 15 seconds, 20%, 10 to 15 seconds, and then over the course of maybe four to five times out, we're going to reach our lambda target. Lambda target meaning that's what we set that we want for that particular RPM and throttle position. And if we're in boost, boost pressure. We do this until we get a good understanding and a good variable, not a good variable. We do this until we get a good air value, meaning we don't want the ECU to be making more than four to five percent fuel corrections plus or minus. So once I get that all situated as far as 5, 10, 15, 20%, now we're gonna go 25, 30, 40%, okay? Go back in those, hold them for 10 to 15 seconds each. The more RPM or revolutions per minute, okay, ignition cycles that we have within that throttle position, okay, that percentage there, the more data we'll have looking at the data log. From there, we go and we take those numbers and we fix the changes over and over and over again. This is the best I can do because I'm not on a dyno for real life tuning, okay? Not a big issue because this is a really good learning curve for me to help myself understand these things. So when I'm at the track, I can also do this. But from there, we keep on going. 45, 50, 55%, 60, 65, 75%. And then we go into acceleration and throttle, um, I guess a transient throttle of movements. So we're also looking at acceleration enrichment for fuel and what the bike likes. And we keep on doing this over and over again. Honestly, I could be out on the road about 30, 40 times before the bike is completely tuned, which is not a big deal because it's ride time, it's knowledge time, and it's fun for me. The real trick is when we get to like 80, 90, and 100% throttle. The reason why is because we have to look out for animals, road conditions, cars, cops so authorities and then also maybe the road just not really meant for what we're doing meaning it's not good enough for traction or we don't have enough room to stretch the legs of the bike so we have to start playing with gearing what gear are we going to be doing these pulls so if you start too low of a gear you're going to have too much torque you can blow the tire off when you blow the tire off you're going to start spinning if you start too high of a gear for you to get up into that rpm range would be way too long Okay, and you might be going too fast. So realistically, a third might be a little too torquey, just barely. So we'll go with fourth gear for this bike. Fourth gear would be perfect. Remember, I did change the gearing. We changed it for, um, we have 41 teeth in the rear, and we have 17 teeth on the front, which technically, if you're looking at the, the gearing commander uh, online, this should be able to reach 196 miles an hour if I have the power to push the bike that far. So, all right, back to the tuning stuff. Nerd! Okay, so we're on a different uh, laptop or different computer here. This is my laptop. 
um, not on the PC or the desktop anymore because I needed some other stuff on this one. But as you can see, this is dedicated to motorcycle and garage applications as far as I have FuelTech, I have Link, I have AAM, I have multiple softwares on here that I use, including, including Megalog Viewer, and obviously we have uh, Max ECU. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the, this is the, this is the tune from the first ride. Now, what I wanna do also is bring up the data log from the first ride. Now this is pretty nifty if I wanted to see, obviously we have map lambda RPM to opposition and any of these right here, these channels down here at the bottom, I can see. This shows real time movement. So if I press play, it shows real time of all these features here. I can show them into a line graph or I can just watch them here on a gauge. But the main feature I like is the histogram. So this is showing me what the ECU on average is doing each of these cells. So right here is taking out 30% fuel, right here is 25%, right here is taking out 23, and so on and so forth. What I do is, is I log all this. I stop my ride, I come back to the garage, and I make these changes in the ECU because I set up these parameters, throttle position versus RPM, the same exact way, which I hope I have that correct right now. Anyways, it should be set up uh, cell by cell. So one, three, five, seven, nine should be one, three, five, seven, nine, all the way to a hundred. Okay. So what I do is I make these changes. I literally copy what's going on here and it might take multiple times to make that cell good. So right here at 2,500 and 5% throttle. Okay. I go here. Well, I should say 2,500 and 5% throttle is negative 14%. So I go to 2,500 RPM, 5% throttle, and I take out 14%, like that. And I do this for every cell that needs changed. Now, let's take a look at, and as you can see here, I have so many rides before I actually threw the turbo back on. So we have 10 rides of tuning and data logging before I felt comfortable enough to put the turbo on and start tuning for boost. So let's look at our first data log and our air corrections versus our eighth ride. And I'll show you that these locations are no longer negative 28 or negative seven, negative 21. Let's compare to what we're looking at now. Okay, 25, 5% throttle, we're off by 1%. What we need to do is keep on doing this to where we're pretty much less than plus or minus 5%. That's kind of rule of thumb that I've been seeing in training courses. So right here, I have almost 2,000 hit counts, negative 1.6 or 1.65. Right here, almost 3,000 hit counts, and still it's less than a percent. So this is what we're talking about. Right here, you can see this is a rich area. For some reason, it's taken out. When I go back and ride, and I go and take these out. But as you can see, as the tune got better and better, I would continue to go all the way up to 100% throttle and ride out to almost where it's red line, right? So tune one, ride one, I didn't do that. Didn't even go close to 100% throttle. We stopped at 20. I stopped at 5,000 RPM. But ride eight, and you can see these values are horrible, right? But ride eight, here's what we're looking at. Okay, minus this general area right here, which I know I fixed because we put the turbo on. But look, these numbers are pretty awesome. So this is what I would do over and over again because I don't have a dyno. It's not ideal, but it does work. And unlike a car, we don't have a passenger or a seat to put the laptop. So I'd have to run out and do these runs and then come back and do this. Whoa. This whole episode has been a mouthful, but I hope you guys enjoyed all that mumbo jumbo technical nerdy stuff. I absolutely adore and entertain myself with it, but I will put you guys to sleep if I continue. I tell you I will. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut you off here, but 
we have some really cool stuff coming up. I do have a tuning session live for you guys, not live, but on video for you guys with Walter from Florida. Help me with my ignition stuff. But also I have another video coming out for you guys. And this one has to do with throttle body syncing and using a really fancy tool I got. So I will show you guys that here very shortly. But for right now, guys, that's all I got for you. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.